How do I lose the fat here? How do I lose the fat there? Well, it's important for you to start first understanding how many calories are in a pound of fat. Do you know? So if you wanna burn a pound of fat, you have to burn a certain number of calories to get that fat off your body. It's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. And this, my darling, is five pounds of fat. So that's 17,500 calories in five pounds of fat. BMI. I know so many of you always wanna share what your BMI is, but you know what? The number is absolutely useless. It's not accurate. We now, for the love of technology and science, have all these incredible ways to measure our own body fat percentage. So we don't need BMI because it's useless and it's inaccurate. If you have ever been stressed out by the number on the scale, then this episode is for you. Welcome to the Jeanette Jenkins Show. Don't worry, I got you covered. Now let's get started. Today we are gonna take a topic that stresses out so many people, which is the scale, and we're gonna simplify it. This is not your self-worth, okay? This is science, and we are going to understand these numbers so you will understand your own body composition. I'm gonna use my numbers so that it's an easy example for you. This is a smart scale, and it's something you can use to measure your body composition over time, okay? So when you step on the scale, you're gonna get what is first, your weight, okay? So on my smart scale, I measured at 143 pounds. But what is that 143 pounds? That 143 pounds is my body fat, my muscle, my water weight, my bones, and my internal organs, okay? All combined into one number. Now for our health, we need a breakdown of that. So my body fat percentage was 23.7%, 23.7. Now what's a healthy body fat percentage, right? For a woman, we wanna be below 32%, okay? If you're over 32%, then you have excess fat that can increase your risk of heart disease. This is five pounds of fat, okay? I want you to see the difference between five pounds of fat and five pounds of muscle. Look, look at the difference. The surface area of fat is almost double the size of a five pounds of muscle. This is why you will see people who gain weight or they stay the same, but they go down in clothing size. So you might start your fitness journey and you stay, you're like, oh my God, I'm not losing any weight. I'm not losing any weight, but you went down three clothing sizes, okay? Because muscle, takes up less space than fat. Now, going back to our body composition, we got 23.7% of body fat on my scale. Then the other measurement I got off my scale is water, 56.5% water. Let's talk about water. Did you know that 50 to 60, sometimes even 70% of your weight is water weight? In the life of fitness, when we're going around doing our workouts and sweating out and perspiring, it is very easy to lose three, four, five, six pounds of water weight from one heated class. Things like hot Pilates, hot yoga, um, indoor cycling classes where you're sweating and losing a lot of water. Just know that that number on the scale, when it changes sometimes and very often, it is water weight that you are losing. The other percentages that you get from your smart scale are your muscle, and in my case, it was 30.5%. Now, a more advanced way to measure your body composition that you can do occasionally is a DEXA scan, okay? A DEXA scan is an x-ray, all right? Now, the difference, a smart scale, the technology it uses is called bioelectrical impedance. That means when you step on the scale, there is a current that goes through your body and it measures the density of your muscle compared to the density of your body fat compared to the density of your water and your bones. All those parts of your body are different densities, okay? The SMART scale only measures the percentage of your weight that is bones. So I'm 4.2% of my 
weight is bones. Whereas a DEXA scan measures the density of our bones so we can know if we are at risk of osteoporosis, right? Which we want to make sure we have strong bones or do we have weak bones and we need to strengthen them. Now, it tends to be recommended later in life after you're over 50, but I actually recommend earlier because you can start making changes in the way that you train. Like if you know that osteoporosis runs in your family, then go ahead and get a DEXA scan earlier. I was able to get a DEXA scan, book it the same day, I paid $40 in just five minutes from my house. It's very affordable and you can go in and get these incredible scans of your entire body composition. So to compare, when I did a DEXA scan, my weight was 145.2. When I did the smart scales, 143. Well, of course, when I was at home, I was weighing myself naked, fresh out of bed. When I was on my DEXA scan, I had clothes on, okay? So there's a difference there. Body fat percentage on my DEXA scan was 25.2%, which was a little bit higher. You want to measure using the same device in the same conditions, okay? So you measure every Monday, early in the morning, as soon as you wake up. Okay, or you pick the day, you pick the conditions, but they have to be the same, all right? Now, the DEXA scan, my m muscle and my water are combined together. On my smart scale, I was 30.5% muscle and 56.5% water. But on my DEXA scan, they combine the two numbers together and they call it lean mass, the last measurement it gave me was my bone density. And my bone density was 1.6 grams per centimeter squared. And I am in a very, 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 very healthy zone for bones, which is I'm actually in the top one percentile for my age, which means I'm basically invincible. I'm super strong <laughs> and my bones are strong. You can throw me and I'm not gonna break. <laughs> I have been strength training since I was 16 years old. 35 years I have been weight training and jumping. So to increase your bone density, you need to do some of this called plyometrics. The bounding forces, your bones have to respond to that force. And that is why jumping or plyometrics help strengthen your bones and lifting heavy and heavy, we're talking like six to 10 reps. So important that you understand your own body composition because let's stop stressing out over the number on the scale. That is just a number. It is not your self-worth. It's not how amazing you are as a person. Two other categories that we're gonna hit that are important for measuring your fitness and your health. Health tests, okay? So these are the tests you would get done at your doctor's office things like your blood pressure, blood work, cholesterol, okay? Fitness tests. This category is probably the one that gets missed the most, but you can see the largest amount of progress over time. That's muscular strength, muscular endurance, flexibility, and cardiovascular. So our cardiovascular system, that's the test you take when it's your VO2 max test, okay? An at-home test version is your Rockport walking test or a step test, but I also have these easy tests listed on my website. Walk test is just a one mile test and you test your heart rate at the end of it. There are home versions of all fitness tests, okay? So know that you can empower yourself and you can do the home version of the fitness test. And the purpose of doing the fitness test is so you know where you start from. Remember that class you took and it was so hard you could barely get through, but then you kept showing up and you kept going and you kept going and like a month later, you're like, oh my God, that class is so easy. That's because you improved, you kept showing up. Your cardiovascular system got better, your muscle endurance got better, your muscular strength got better. Now, BMI. I know so many of you always want to share what your BMI is, but you know what? The number is absolutely useless. It's just an equation that was created by a gentleman in the 1830s. He was a mathematician. It's not accurate. 
We now, for the love of technology and science, have all these incredible ways to measure our own body fat percentage. So we don't need BMI because it's useless and it's inaccurate. The term body mass index was created by Ansel Keys in 1972, an American physiologist, and he wanted to come up with a way, again, to estimate body fat percentage, to estimate someone's obesity. Your body mass index does not take into account the percentage of your body fat, the percentage of your bones, the percentage of your water, the percentage of your muscles. It doesn't work, so let's just not use it. It's really that simple. When I go up to 150 pounds, when I put on more muscle, I am me, Jeanette Jenkins, at 23% body fat and considered in the unhealthy zone in BMI. And I know I am not unhealthy. But when I do a DEXA scan, I have these incredible numbers that show me that I'm in the top 99 percentile for bones. My visceral fat is 0 0.07 pounds. That means my internal organs are shining, baby. They're like, hey, we are loving life in here. We are not clogged and we are loving it. Advocate for yourself and make sure that your health professional who you seek advice from is not using BMI. Another tool that is helpful for measurements is your girth measurements because when you are changing size, like I showed you, the difference between body fat and muscle, five pounds each, you can be going down in size, but your weight is staying the same. So sometimes people get discouraged. Well, that's what we have a good old measuring tape, and you can do all of your girth measurements. The girth measurements around your waistline, which you do at your belly button or just above, the girth measurements around your hips, the girth measurements around your quads, your calves, your arms, your neck. We have all of those measurements that you can access on my website. The importance is you can track the individual location and you can track the total. So if you total up all of those girth measurements, I just named one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sites, and you total all of those girth measurements and you do them once a month, once every few months, you'll see the inches start to go down when you are training with the goal to burn body fat percentage, okay, and to change the composition of your body. So girth measurements are a great tool to help you see the entire picture. Journaling is an excellent way for you to be able to look back at how far you've come on your health journey. One of the number one questions we get asked as trainers is, how do I lose the fat here? How do I lose the fat there? Well, it's important for you to start first understanding how many calories are in a pound of fat. Do you know? So if you wanna burn a, fat, a pound of fat, you have to burn a certain number of calories to get that fat off your body. It's 3,500 calories in one pound of fat. And this, my darling, is five pounds of fat. So that's 17,500 calories in five pounds of fat, which seems like, how could I ever lose five pounds? But you can do it. And guess what you do it with? This, muscle. Your five pounds of muscle, it's your muscle that is going to help you with your fat burning, as well as your nutrition and eating healthy. And this is why it's a lifestyle change. You need to be able to incorporate both healthy eating and strength training and cardio exercise in order for you to have that calorie negative that you need to have at the end of every week so that you can have that fat burning that goes over time so you can achieve your goals and get the results that you want. It does take time and you can do it, but you have to make those changes and you have to educate yourself and I'm here to help you. The most important takeaway I want you to leave with is that after you finish all of these body measurements, you have to exercise. It doesn't matter how old you are, if you're a male, if you're a female, if you're a child, if you're a teenager, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, you get what I'm saying? 80s. 
Exercise benefits absolutely everyone, and the benefits are enormous. It starts with your brain health. It helps improve your cognition and the way that you think every day. It helps improve your mental health. It actually helps you even create more brain cells. It helps decrease your risk of heart disease, the number one killer worldwide. It helps improve the blood circulation through your body. It helps you with your oxygen consumption. It helps you bring fresh oxygen to all of your internal organs and through everywhere that you need throughout your body. It helps decrease your risk of cancer and so much more. Let's use these measurements to empower us, okay? The measurements are there to empower you so you can create the best regimen for yourself so you can get incredible results and improve the quality of your life. I'm gonna be here with my five pounds of fat and my five pounds of muscle and so much more to help you learn so much about your body and your health and your wellness. So make sure you subscribe, come back, watch, learn, and we're gonna take this journey together. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Apple, follow on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.